Hello everyone, this is Sylvain Rochon, the Peaceful Revolutionary. It's been two years since I last did a video like this and I, uh, I want to do it again uh, about every week or two and more frequently than ever uh, because I think, uh, well, I have more time now. I uh, was dedicating most of my time to my businesses uh, for the last two years, well, more than that. And now I'm going back to teaching conferences and uh, you know speaking uh, in general about different subjects, uh, including the future, emotional intelligence, uh, technology, um, all sorts of subjects, project uh, project management. Uh, so I'll be a professor at the university uh, in my local city for a while, and uh, as well as the local college. Uh, so I want to teach. I want to teach again. Um, so as you know me, I am here to educate on the future technology, uh, political systems, economy, uh, all sorts of subject. But uh, more importantly about uh, revolution, change, essentially, and a peaceful revolution. We want things to improve, to become better. So that's why I exist. That's why I'm here. That's why I call myself the peaceful revolutionary. So. What I want to start off with is something that's fairly important to me these days. It's the uh, essentially the collapse of the economy as we know, and we're talking about the global economy uh, that is coming up. We don't know exactly when it's actually going to happen, but the trend has been happening since the year 2000, and even in, uh, some of the metrics before that, since the 1990s, even. Um, and just to give you a, uh, some insights on where this all comes from, is that for the last few hundred years, we've been operating under a system of employment. People get a job, they make money from a business or some entity or some individual, the money goes into their pocket, they pay for some things like food, uh, tools, uh, anything they may need. The economy thus goes back eventually to the uh, the company who re reinvests this money into uh, into uh, salaries into the people that are making. It. So there's a flow, a cash flow, of money going on. Uh, so that's the current economical system. So it's based on consumption consumption uh, of widgets and things, and uh, also entertainment and things that are. You know, skills like things that are less tangible like education for example and through that cash flow is also a tranche of whatever we uh, we earn that goes back to the government which which is another loop of cash flow which is very very similar and part of the same system and it goes into infrastructure and whatever whatever else we need as a society and community that's the traditional economic system that's the way that the economy, the economy works still today um, and another thing you need to know as far as history is concerned is that technology has always improved. Uh, and as technology increases or improves, it improves our productivity. And with each significant technological improvement, uh, people were always concerned about losing their job because sometimes it changed things that uh, made some jobs obsolete. But at the same time, it created a bunch of other jobs related to the, this new advancement in technology. Uh, so the curve of productivity and employment was essentially parallel until the year 2000, approximately, when things started to diverge where essentially the amount of jobs created in general became stagnant and productivity, productivity uh, kept increasing even at a faster pace than before uh, because of uh, the internet, the information of the technology essentially, advancements in, the, in robotics and uh, AI and more importantly about devices like computers, computers in your pocket like your smartphone smartphone, these sort of things that uh, increases our way of, uh, of using, of consuming the technology, making it, uh, making us more productive. Uh, in some cases, automating a whole bunch of processes, making, uh, making uh, us, well, taking us out of the loop uh, to, to a certain extent as, as employees. And at about the same time, we started seeing other trends uh, where um, 
you know, the, the, the minimum wage, for example, which should increase at a regular pace and, and salaries themselves would uh, become stagnant. For the most part, stagnant for about 80% of us. So 80% of the lowest earners, so those people that, uh, that are middle class or lower class salaries, uh, our salaries have remained also stagnant. Not only the number of jobs, but also the salaries. They did not increase with inflation. Uh, the top 20% had, had a good go at it, primarily because they have discre discretionary income for investment. They can take advantage of opportunities that most people can't. So they can make the, they can take advantage of the opportunities of a, of a depressed market or a market that is uh, having uh, some issues like pre-2008 and also post-2008 after that, uh, that small dip in depression. So, so that's a, these three points uh, are, are a bit of a problem actually because historically people would say, and people, some economists still say this in the future, not futurists, economists still say this, well, you know, we'll figure it out. There's going to be, uh, there's uh, usually when advancements in technology is always new jobs that are created. A lot of people in technology uh, and economists are looking at it now and they're saying, well, we don't know right now. It's, we, didn't, we can't see what will create a new spatter of jobs because it's been dragging along with no job creation for, for 15 years now. Uh, so the diversions started like this. Now it's like this. I'll share some links and you'll be able to see the graphs from the links uh, under the, the video. So you'll be able to check it out. Uh, and <laughs> it's, it's still increasing. And technologies like 3D printing as an example, which uh, about a year ago, we started talking about it, maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, now you can find them in, uh, in, at Best Buy. Uh, the cheapest ones I found was, were $100 for cheap plastics, and the, the good ones maybe for families were at about $1,000. In about a year from now, that's going to be way, way cheaper. And we don't, we, we can't, we can print a lot more than plastics. We can print ceramics, metals, multiple material uh, 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 widgets. We can. We can do moving parts, motors, and things like that using the single uh, 3D printer. Uh, it's getting really exciting. It's still not refined like uh, our, like manufacturing. Uh, it's not, but it's getting there. Slowly, it's getting there. Well, actually, quite quickly, it's getting there. Uh, very quickly, uh, as a matter of fact. And uh, if you look at this technology, this emerging technology, which essentially will replace more widgets that we usually would buy creating cash flow in the old style economy, this kind of machine in the home allows people to download files, create their own 3D pieces without needing to go to the store. They don't need, the, there's no labor needed to build the material, it's, not, it's, not, it's all automated using the 3D machines. And the blueprints to make their widgets in the machines can be downloaded for free from open source on the internet. And all you need is really the materials, the raw materials like the plastic or the metal in, in a refined form to insert into the machine. This house still needs to be sold. But, you know, for a, let's say, a, a, a a ceramic figurine that is uh, half, uh, like six inches high, you know, instead of buying this piece from an art store, let's say for, I don't know, 200 bucks, uh, you're going to use up $20 worth of ceramic raw material because the only, the only cost is really the amount of material when you talk talking about 3D printing, not about the style or the brand or anything like that. And uh, nobody's going to be able to copyright items. You'll be able to get, you know, stuff that cost, it would cost like really high because of the brand into your home. And nobody's going to be able to go after you because of copyright infringement in your home. You, you're doing it for personal use. You just, you just got the blueprint and, you know, who can stop that? Even the dark net, 
Uh, I don't want to get into what the darknet is, but even the darknet is going mainstream, where you you can do dealings on the internet essentially anonymously, without all the metrics and all this stuff. And you, I can talk about the darknet another time, but you, you can look at it in TED Talks, especially. There's a really good uh, good videos on that. So so essentially, the three printers will eliminate a whole bunch of uh, of need for widgets. And we'll be able to do it in our own home ourselves, just using raw materials. All we need is really, like the companies that will be producing raw materials, if there's enough demand, they'll be doing great. But the Dollaramas and every other shop that produces in China a bunch of widgets will go out of business. There's not enough business to go around if, uh, if everybody's, if a lot, too many people do it themselves, right? Uh, so that's an increase in productivity because in our home, since it's going to be cheaper to do things our own way and customizing to our own experiences, we'll probably have more widgets in the home. We'll be able to replace things like uh, dishes and uh, widgets and whatever else way easier and faster with the same amount of money. Like we're not getting a lot of money from wages anyway, right? Uh, but that, that creates a cash flow problem. And there's less and less cash flow during that. And if there's less cash flow, it's harder to have jobs because there's l fewer jobs available for the amount of population and for the amount of pr productivity. The, the gap keeps increasing more and more to a point where there's going to be a point. I don't know where. Nobody really knows when. But there's going to be a point where the whole system is going to crash. There's going to be so little confidence in, in how things are working that the whole economy is going to collapse, like the stock market is just going to go crash completely. Uh, right now it's really high because companies are like 20, uh, 27, 20, 30 percent of, uh, of their budget is spent on buying back their shares, which are already very expensive on the, on the stock market in, the, uh, in North America right now. Uh, and it inflates artificially the value of the shares because it's the companies like, they are buying a lot of their own shares. Uh, and that drives prices up. And at some point, you can't you can't do that any uh, anymore so much. It's just because prices keep going up, and then you, you keep increasing your uh, the, the the amount of shares you're buying at a higher price, and so on and so forth. Uh, you, you can't do uh, do that forever. Uh, that kind of increase, you run out of steam at some point by doing that too. But anyway, uh, this whole thing is going to crash. It's just going to collapse. Uh, and, you know, it, it's simply the, the people themselves will say, look, we're underemployed. We can't suffice for our own family, our own needs enough, which drives them to using these technologies like 3D printing and, uh, and, 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 and piracy on the Internet and all, uh, and all these systems because they can't pay for the, their entertainment and all these, these basic needs. It's, it's a vicious circle. You see what I mean? It's a vicious circle. Where before people were were quite happy in generating generating new jobs, going to work, contributing to to society, and getting the new widget, the new thing from the market. Now people are are being driven to not do that as much as possible. The amount of people that are that are going to consultancy has never been higher, and it's increasing. People don't want the they want the flexibility to be able to do different things. And some people just can't get a regular job, so they, they become self-employed by default just because they can't get a full-time employment anymore. The businesses don't hire enough. There's no new job creation, but there's more elements that make your work easier to do. New software, AI, all these things. Um, so if there's no new job market that is produced by the new technologies and I nobody sees what it's going to be right now so it's not visible yet so that's worrisome then it means that the, the, the current cash flow economy using currency is likely going to crash and uh, I love it I, I think that's great I, th I think that system is outdated. I think it creates a whole bunch of pain in the world, too. Think about it. Money, greed, and power, they're all tied together. 
and they're creating a lot of conflicts, like even the conflict in Syria. You can re I could talk about that too. I'm talking about politics, conflicts in Syria, conflicts between uh, between Russia and the U.S., China and Japan, Japan, South Korea, South Korea, North Korea. Uh, these are like zones where there's a, there's discussion right now between the big some big powers. These are politicians that are playing a dangerous power game about money and power, who's going to get power, who's who's trying to steal other people's power, in the U.S. mostly. Uh, and, but the, the, these, these power struggles, normal people like you and I, we don't want those things. We just want to live a normal life, be happy. We want live and let live. Like, let the Russians and the Israelis and the Palestinians and whoever else, we want everybody to live peacefully. I think everybody can agree to that. But there's these power struggles for oil, for money and position, and to 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 to, to be in the right position to protect on pretext of protection, whatever it is. Uh, no no individual really cares about that. It doesn't affect their own life. Everybody could stop that that power struggle at the top level. Everybody and as long as you have a home to live in safely. You got food on the table, and you got different resources to entertain you. You and your family won't look for trouble, and you probably won't be a victim of trouble because you're okay. Now, I don't mean that we should dismantle all the political systems. I think there is a revamp of them. I think a lot of it can go away. I think most of the political systems uh, should be there to help with infrastructure and to support the communities in their own locality or regions, uh, law enforcement, these kind of things. Uh, but the, these um, state versus state power struggles are a thing of the past, I think. We don't need them. They should not exist anymore. Everybody's communicating with everybody else through the web, unless you don't have web access, which is true for some parts of the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and Africa. And South America, of course, there's a depending on how close to the cities you are. Uh, you know, we are all interconnected with the people, and we're all playing together and having fun and discussing together. Pretty much, freedom of speech and whatnot. Uh, not every case, but uh, we're all collaborating. We're providing resources on the web. We're consuming resources on the web. I'm providing a resource on the web now through this video and hopefully people are going to be able to uh, to check it out and uh, and consume it and uh, enjoy its content. I would recommend also videos from Michio Kaku, uh, from Ray Kurzweil and, uh, and others that uh, are speaking about these topics just like I am about the collapse of the economy and the singularity and these different issues and uh, there's others that are economists now but uh, I'll when you check out the links, you'll you'll see there's there's a excellent people from MIT, for example, that I wrote an excellent article on what's coming up, and I'll post that one, which is a very reliable source, very high grade uh, intellectuals that know what they're talking about. Um, so in any case, um, it's a brave new world that's coming up. I think it, we're we're going to see a switch from the, from the economy of cash and cash flow and power at the top. And the one percent, like as they said, one percent only owning ninety nine percent, to a, a more of a trade system where people democratically agree what's good and what's not through a tool like the the World Wide Web or the Internet now, or and even the dark net. Uh, and, and people provide to this this neural network, international global neural network, and consume from it freely. Uh, and as far as the basics like housing, we know that there's there's more free space in houses and apartments than there are homeless. So we could, in the immediate future, we could provide homes for everybody, everybody, no exceptions in North America. I don't know about the other countries. Um, and we could automate a whole lot more food so that food would come to every house everywhere on time even even more on time than now more automated more on demand uh, and you don't need to dish out any money you just put out your order you receive 
And you wouldn't believe how much food uh, would not waste. Like right now, there's a lot of food that gets wasted in transit and sitting in in workshops, uh, not in workshops, in warehouses, uh, because they need to stock and people go there and you know if, if food gets wasted. But now we could have food on demand and fully automated farms and and, and transportation systems in cities supervised by supervised by just a few people who likely enjoy. Uh, the automated systems and uh, and supervising it would provide this service to society this way, <coughs> and others that like prefer to do something else like education, like I do, uh, we'd be educating because this is what we like to do, and other people would create, write software, contribute to the open source software uh, economy, help each other do, doing the better and the uh, more AI researchers would continue, continue likely doing what they do. Uh, because researchers, they what they hate to do is they hate looking for grants. Grants, but they need grants to well, pay themselves and for their to, to pay for the equipment and their research. If they didn't have need for to, to look for grants, they would spend most of their time doing the research anyway because they're passionate about it. They want to, to search more. Maybe they they search in fields that are more interested to them, but there's no necessarily cash value to it. So maybe they'd, they'd look, look more for cures for diseases instead of treatments. Treatments for diseases is a big money maker, so that's well funded. Cures for diseases not very well funded because there's less money in it. Well, maybe researchers are going to be looking for cures a lot more if you don't depend on cash. That's just an example of an advancement. So, so we'd, be, we'd be able to provide, to provide food for a lot more people because food on demand automated systems, housing for, for everyone, and people can do what they want to contribute to society. Now, this is what, what I see. We call this paradism because it's like creating a little bit of a paradise, essentially. We solve a whole bunch of problems, including crime, because if everybody's got what they need, organized crime and even regular, like desperate crime, crimes of desperation, uh, a lot of it goes away. Because there's no need for it. There's no need. There's no need for a black market. Uh, you know, there's still need for police. There's still need for legal system and these kind of things, but but a lot less because it's less strain on the individual, less strain on the uh, on the society and on the community. A lot of people, a lot more people will be will tend to 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 help each other because they're not busy trying to make a living and scrounging the last dollar so that they can pay for the next thing and maybe have a vacation and all the, the, these struggles that we're living right now. Um, and all the hardware and software needed to get that going exist today. They existed five years ago. Uh, in the market right now, uh, it, it's just there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of pressure in keeping the status quo. People don't want to change. They're scared to change. Politicians and people in power don't want to lose their power. People don't want to lose their money, that 20% or 1% that are really rich and doing well. They want to keep doing well and better on, on the heads of those that are doing not so well. Uh, uh, so there's a lot of pressure not to go that way. So it's very likely when things break, it's going to be a very abrupt break of no confidence uh, and um, and it, it, it may be a little bit dangerous for a little while. I don't know. I mean, nobody really knows how the transition is going to happen or when it's going to really happen. It's very likely it's going to happen in the fall of some year. It could be happening. Okay, uh, the start of a break could happen this year, potentially. I, I, that's why I'm creating this video now is because we're nearing it, but it, near could mean two, three, four years too. Uh, it's um, we talk about these systems kind of changing abruptly. You can't really gauge it, even though the numbers show that we're at the same precipice as the Great Depression of 1929, as, at least numbers-wise and profit and debt and, and the, a lot of the statistical numbers. I'm going to share you share with you an article that uh, kind of illustrates a lot of those numbers to, to kind of give you a better idea. Um, so it could be like very soon, could be in a couple of years, could be a little bit later, I don't really know, but fairly soon. It's not going to be in 10 years or 15 years. It's going to be shorter than that, uh, where things kind of 
going towards a change, a revolution, which I love. As you know, I love revolution. I love change. Uh, and I think it's going to be a positive one. But what I'll do uh, in the next video, like I think I spoke enough. In the next video, what I want to do is I want to, uh, to tell you what to do in preparation for it. Uh, because we don't know what's going to happen. There's, there could be parts of the infrastructure that fail for a while uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, and uh, it really depends on how the crash actually happens, how severe, how abrupt it is. Uh, and also, to, an, to a very big extent, how much uh, the people that love the current economy, which mainly the people in power uh, of money and uh, the, the greedy ones, those that, that, want, that want to hold on to that, and the, polit the high politicians, uh, just how much do you, they, they want to hold on to it. Uh, or, even more importantly, how, how they will attempt to grab power in a new type of economy based on exchange and trade. Uh, I know that people like, uh, for example, Warren Buffett, which is a, uh, I'm a fan of, uh, because he's just really, really smart in, uh, as far as in his investments. Well, he's invested, uh, he actually purchased a railroad, I hear, uh, and some interest in, uh, in insurance, oil. So he's essentially did very, very big personal investments in transportation of basic goods, like energy. Uh, and that's smart because that's that's where the, the control is. I mean, people are still going to want to use these systems. Well, people are still going to want to use gas. People are still going to want to eat, and so things need, still need to be to be transported from A to B. And if you own that, well, maybe you're in a good position to to have some control over the new the new way of doing things, right? Um, so uh, so anyway, I'm going to end the video here. I'm going to write a little bit about this uh, in my blog so you can check it out. And I'm going to write those links for you uh, on some articles that detail uh, some of these things. And uh, hopefully everything is going to go well for all of you. I will see you next time. Probably next week I will post the uh, how to, uh, to survive this. In the meantime, have a good one.